you get somebody, if they're past that developmental age of like 12, 13, mm -hmm. let them actually be a part of what the adults have going on. Don't try to dumb it down. Don't try to separate them. Honor them with a, hey, we want you to be a part of this. And if it feels weird for them, one of the best things you're doing is a service to that family because you might be showing mom and dad they have a, a, an extra connection they need to make. But I truly wouldn't change a whole lot. I really wouldn't. I would raise the bar and go, here you go. You're capable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So invite them into the conversation when the time yeah. is right. And, th and that's like, that's a very early age. I mean, 12, 13, 14. But I also look like that's just right before high school typically. So are they starting to learn about this stuff? Maybe they have a, a debit card or, you know, sure. I think there's yeah. some of those other accounts where you can load, the parent can load them with money. That makes sure. a lot of sense to me as far as the timing. Of course. And they can un they can start to, when they get to that, it's roughly that 12, 13 year developmental range where they can start to understand some of the more abstract, um, you know, uh, concepts. They can start to understand things like compound interest. They can start to understand, um, you know, thing looking at things from a long-term investment strategy. They can start to understand what that means before 12 that's a harder brain. There's a big brain jump that happens around 12 or 13. Um, mm -hmm. And so before that, they have a harder time with the ab some of that abstract concept, right? But you can start talking about some of those bigger concepts around that age, and they will mm -hmm. grasp it really, really quickly. We've got a weird thing. Uh, I, the word teenager wasn't even invented until 1944. It wasn't even a thing. You, you get to be 13, you're, you know, that's why a lot of cultures have like kind of this rite of passage around there, right? You're expected to take on massive amounts of responsibility, but part of it is because you're also capable and you're capable of more complex thought as well. So don't dumb things down for them, honor that and bring mm -hmm. them along with you in those things. And it, I, I want, I, I tell families from a financial perspective as well. I say, look, man, here's a great exercise, thought exercise for you and your spouse. Obviously, if you've got kids that are like, you know, two and three, this doesn't this doesn't apply. But if they start to get to be seven, eight, ten, think through this thought exercise. What happens? You guys uh, go, OK, we're going to leave the kids home just for about 30 minutes, man. We're going to go out and, and uh, we're just going to go pick some stuff up at the store. You go out to the store and you get snowed in like you're now living in the store for the next 24 hours because the snowstorm hit and you're stuck. Are your kids good for the next 24 hours or does the, does the household go to chaos? Like what happens? Are they able to cook dinner? Are they able to, um, you know, do, are they responsible enough to where they're going to go to bed on time? Are they going to take care of all the rest of the chores around the house? Are, do they understand how to do that? And can it be a, a kind of a no factor that you're gone for 24 hours? What if you were gone for a week? Mm -hmm. What if you were gone for a week? So take it further. Can they run the household for a week? Um, are they able to take care of things? Now, obviously, if they can't drive and they can't get to school or whatever that looks like, I understand that that's a thing. But do they know who to call? Could they get a ride? Hey, what happens if you're gone for a month? Are they able to jump in and go? So I say this. If we had to be gone for a month, my 12-year-old knows how to pay all of the bills. She knows how to get our bank account information. She knows where the money's coming from. She knows where the money flows. She knows how it flows from the business, to the business trust, to the family trust, into a foundation. She understands there's a list. We have a literal list of what each one of those is allowed to pay for. So she has a concept of that. This would pay for this. This would pay for this, right? Like you make your kids capable. Make yourself capable and then make your kids capable. People don't like that it's that simple, but it is. It just takes the forethought and responsibility and not going, I'm just going to outsource it to school. And then since I'm outsourcing it to school and I pay through it with my, you know, I pay for it through my tax dollars. Well, now I also have the right to point and go, oh, school should be teaching them. No, 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 no. You're the primary educator. You're a financial advisor. You should be doing the majority of the advising for them now, period.